So what I want to have a look at now, uh, I mean, to be fair, I was going to uh, unwrap this, uh, but what I've done is I've made the geometry in such a dirty, horrible fashion that in all honesty, it's going to be a right pain to unwrap. And to be fair, you wouldn't have geometry like this if you were modeling things correctly. Uh, even if from a designer perspective, you probably wouldn't have geometry like this. So I'm not going to unwrap that because actually it's probably a very bad example in all honesty, so I'm going to delete that. So instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about uh, what to do if you're unsure with regards to unwrapping and you are struggling with the process. And there is a workaround. As I said a thousand times previously, you are designers, so we aren't expecting the world's greatest models and unwrap As long as they are functional, that's all that matters. The artist will do all the, all the, uh, uh, the hard work, so to speak, in terms of unwrapping and modeling correctly. So the workaround is going to be select whatever asset you have in question. So in this instance, I'm going to select everything. And instead of doing the manual method, you are literally just going to press automatic. And what automatic is going to do is going to project from the top front sides. It's not going to give you by any stretch of the imagination a perfect result, but it will give you a result which from a designer perspective is adequate. We can live with that. It's going to create issues in the long run, but those issues are minimal from your perspective as a designer. So I've just given that an automatic. Let's see where we are. So essentially it's now split up this into multiple, multiple UV shells. Sometimes it will do a good job. Sometimes it will just do some random stuff such as on here, but that's fine. We can live with that from a design perspective. So now that you've hit automatic unwrap, then it's the same process as before. Select your shells or your polys. You're gonna press, I'm just gonna scroll up a bit. You're gonna press unfold. You're going to press set and then orient and layout. So the exact same technique as previously. Give it a few moments to do its thing. And that there would more than meet our requirements. So if we were doing something on these lines where effectively we've got uh, quite a complex shape, then what you would do is, because essentially all I've done here is is I'm just going to turn off my, my, my border edges initially. Uh, so all I've done is I've got a sequence of cubes and I've moved them into place. And each one of those cubes uh, is effectively a, a shelf or, or the sides of, of, a, of, a, of a bookcase, as the case may be. So remember how I mentioned that when you create a default cube, the UV shells are correct or certainly usable uh, from a design perspective. So as a result, if you'd make one... Uh, cube, orientate the cube, rotate it around to make multiple shells, very, very straightforward and easy to do. That will essentially just give us multiple UV shells on top of each other, which is this. So if I double click on that, I'm just going to press W to go to translate, you're going to see that every time I double click, we've got multiple shells. So if I was to select everything now and just click on layout, you can see that we've got each one of these corresponds to each one of those cubes. So what we would need to do in this instance, so imagine starting with creating a cube and duplicating the cube and you know thin, thinning it off, moving the verts as the case may be, but they're all still cubes and that you produce something on these lines. So this is a good example where the UV shells are correct in the first place. So what you would do is you would always edit, delete all by type history, modify freeze transformations, and then I mean, I've already pressed layout, but it makes no difference. Imagine they were all back on top of each other again. You would just simply uh, select everything, and then you're going to do exactly what we've done before. You're going to press unfold, you're going to press set, you're going to press orient, and you're going to press layout. And that there would give you perfect results uh, every time without fail. So to unwrap effectively uh, you know, a table, uh, for example, or something along these lines, we wouldn't need to do a great deal, to be fair. And this would probably, you know, work uh, for us quite quite well. If we were to consider adding some bevels on there to add a bit of detail, so we already have a pre-existing UV shell which is workable. So if I select everything, I'm going to zoom in a touch, I'm just going to add a bevel on there. So a bevel will obviously uh, increase the realism and just give it you know something else uh, in terms of interest. So I'm just going to give it three segments. So I have my hard and soft edges turned on, so if you don't have that on, so the default is normally I just toggle it to that. So the default is normally this. So what's happening here? We have uh, incorrect smoothing groups applied. So because effectively we've got, uh, you know, we want everything to be soft edged, we would just shift, right click, soften, harden, and just hit soft edge. 
and that will smooth off these edges as such and then to confirm that it's smoothed off if you just turn on toggle uh, soft edge display anything which is a dotted line is essentially a soft edge anything which is a uh, solid line is a vertical edge so if I just select these two edges up here and I turn these into uh, not a vertical edge sorry anything with a solid edge is a hard edge so if I click on harden edge here and now you'll see okay, let's do that again that these are obviously uh, incorrect and can have issues with shading so what you would do if you're going to start beveling objects like this I would literally just soften edge every single one so that aside so it's tried its best to try and uh, allow us to put that bevel on there so but obviously over here you can see how it's gone a bit warped and a bit funky so this is where what we would do is we'd adopt a different approach and what we would do is instead of what I'm going to do is I'm just going to basically uh, delete that completely so instead of applying the bevel afterwards we would start with a beveled shape in the first place and then duplicate that after it's been unwrapped so I'll just apply that to that process now and give, give you a heads up with regards to how to do it so I'm going to make a polygon cube I'm going to zoom in a touch so I'm not going to do the entire thing but the basic process is, is identical I suppose so let's just now uh, I'll do a shelf so that's going to be one of my shelves and obviously I need a, 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 a vertical one as well but I'm not going to create that I'm essentially just going to stick with my horizontal edge for the time being uh, horizontal uh, shelf should I say so what we would do is we can accept the fact that this type of shelf would be consist of multiple cubes uh, similar to a table tabletop would be a cube each leg would be a cube so what we would do is essentially model this in and put the bevels in nice and early on as the case may be so what we do is select all the edges and then we're just going to go bevel edge and I'll leave mine I'll leave it relatively large so we see what's going on and just put the number of segments to three and that's going to give us a nice beveled uh, uh, shelf but as I said previously the smoothing groups are incorrect you can see there's some funny shading so I'm going to press shift right click soften all the edges and that's now going to give us a more believable result and now we're going to essentially unwrap this so we'll treat it as almost exactly like a cylinder so effectively you've got a top and a bottom uh, and some sides so the way to unwrap this just get back to our UV editor is oh, there, just press control one as well just isolate that off so currently there is no UVs on there because it's uh, in the process of us oh no there is time light don't lie there it is there we are so obviously we can tell that that's obviously incorrect so this is a good example of it's all incorrect so what you would do is start again so create camera based so if I think of this logically we've essentially got the sides of a cylinder so all I'm going to do is select the sides uh, and then control right click to edge perimeter and then you can see it's just going to loop it around or the other alternative was essentially in edge mode is double click that edge go all the way to the other side and double click that with shift so add that to the selection with shift and then you can see it's got this selection this selection over here you press shift x at this point and then that'll give us three uv shells <coughs> excuse me one two and three and then we would do exactly what we did with the cylinder so split off one of the edges and i'll just grab that one there and literally press shift x and then go into shell mode so we've now got the three uv shells exactly like we did with the cylinder and the same process again so unfold set oriented layout and that there uh, will give us a good result but if you look carefully this is where you can see that just visually looking at that something doesn't feel quite right so once you do a quick check and you'll go up oh, that doesn't look quite right at all does it you know what's obviously going on there I put the UV bricks in the correct place but something isn't right so this is where we would always prior to doing this is edit delete all by type history and modify freeze transformations so now that I've done that you'll find that this here will unfold correctly uh, etc so a quick unfold a quick uh, set again orient layout and now that's perfect now these shapes now correspond with that so essentially what you've done here is you've unwrapped 
a relatively detailed shelf. You're going to press Control D, and let's see. I want to keep mine really basic to be fair. I press Control D, will duplicate it once. I press Shift D, will remember that uh, transformation, the move, and the the the, the, uh, the actual duplication process. So that's going to give me four shelves. I'm just going to go to full screen with regards to this because it is going to make life easier. And then all I'm going to do now is criticize the tops and bottoms. So I'm going to press Control D to duplicate it. I'm going to press E, and then I'm going to press J and turn, snap it around 180 degrees. I'm going to go to my front view, press F. Oh, in fact, I'll have to go to my right view in this case. Right view, press F to frame in on that. I'm going to do this in wireframe. I'm going to press Control Space Bar to go into complete full screen. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this over to my sides. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to make sure that all this is aligned quite nicely. So you can do it by eye and there's no harm in that. Uh, it's not going to be the end of the world or you can do it by snapping the pivot point. So I'll just do it by eye for argument's sake. So that there clearly looks like it's connected to that. That's good. And then I'm just going to scroll into the top. I'm going to select these verts and manipulate them so they are roughly there and thereabouts. Again, you can just eyeball this. It's not going to cause any problems in the long run. We're not looking for the world's greatest level of accuracy at this stage. Uh, with this one over here, I'm just going to pop it up, press F to frame in on that, and just keep moving it till these are roughly aligned. So that's aligned quite nicely. And then I'm just going to press Control D and move that over, to, over here. And just zoom in a touch and align it into place. So that looks like it's aligned there. So there we'd have a very, very, very simple uh, Shelf, as the case may be, or bookshelf. Let's assume we want to put some uh, vertical uh, bricks in there as well, some vertical uh, uh, wooden uh, planks, slats. I forgot, I've lost a trade of thought actually, it doesn't matter. Control D, duplicate that across. And in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the bevel size in there, but I'm just going to go to my top view, press 4 to go to wide frame. I'm just going to thin this off, so I'm just going to press vertex. Uh, just drag this across to here. Let's go back into mass perspective. And then what I'm also going to do is because at the moment what's going to happen, I'll just press 5, is you can see now that it's the, the polygons are in the exact same location and they're causing uh, intersection issues. So in this case, what I would do to resolve that is I'm just going to select all the vertices at the front and I'm just going to pop them slightly forward to stop any potential. Uh, buffering issues, Z-fighting issues, should I say. Likewise, with this one over here, I'm just going to move it ever so slightly higher. In fact, I'll move it lower, actually. To there. Well, to be fair, I shouldn't even be doing that, really. Let's do this properly. So what I'm going to do is, I'm, instead of doing that, because that's the thing, that's obviously incorrect, actually. Me being silly. I'm just going to go to my right mode, and it would suggest that you know that should never be there. It should actually be over here, shouldn't it? So let's just move this. So it's roughly into place, and apply the same principle at the bottom, and then just drop it there. You could leave it like we had before, but to be honest with you, that, that's a bit it's a bit dirty to be fair, a bit naughty. So we'll do sort that out. And obviously this over here that would work, but if you move it ever so slightly forward, that would also work. So now we've got uh, essentially a nice division in there. Uh, we can always press Control D and then maybe split it up further as the case may be. So I'll, I'll keep it relatively detailed for time and I'll split it up quite nicely. That will do. If I was obviously concerned about exact distances uh, between everything, so let's assume I wanted that to be exactly you know one, two, and three. What I could do is from the right view, press F. I can just do this as a guide. I can essentially put three splits in there. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to tell Maya to effectively put some three uh, horizontal splits in there and I'll use those as a guide to align these. So I'm going to go to my uh, Insert Edge Loop tool and I'm going to tell this that I want to put uh, multiple edges in there and there's going to be three. So I'll just put three in there, close that down, and just select that and now we have one, two and three. Press Q to quit that menu. And now all I would do is go back into my object mode and then just manipulate these. So the pivot point is currently there. Centralize the pivot with modify center pivot. In my case, Alt C will do that for me. I've got a shortcut. I'm going to select all three of those and just press Alt C. 
and that's just going to modify uh, the center pivot point for all of them in one fell swoop. And then all I'm going to do is eyeball it where this thing, uh, these are currently uh, nicely aligned. And that is a very, very, very simple and easy way of making sure that you know the shape is is accurate and consistent now. So don't forget, it's still a cube. We put some splits in there, doesn't make a jot difference. Uh, let's now have a look at our UVs and see what's going on. We probably should save this as well in the long run. Uh, I'm not going to do that just in case, uh, but you should save it. So let's now just select all this and see where we are in terms of our UVs. So go back into our panels, save layouts, and perspective UV editor. Just zoom in a touch and reselect all that. So remember how we essentially did one cube and uh, chamfered it, and then we fixed the UVs on that one chamfer, or should, should I say beveled, one beveled uh, cube, and then we duplicated that. So effectively what we've done is we unwrapped one thing correctly. The shape has remained identical. We've just changed the scale of it, uh, moved some of the verts, but the shape is still a beveled uh, cube. So all we would do now is if we were to attach all this together, we might as well do that. We would need to do that in the long run, in the long run anyway. So I'm just going to turn off my caps lock. Shift right click and combine. And then what you would do is if we uh, try just uh, unfolding this, remember how it can often screw up. Uh, so what you need to do before we apply that process is just delete all by type history and freeze transformations. And then after that, it is quite literally simply a matter of selecting all the UV shells. Just turn on our show V show UV toolkit. Mine's dragged over there again, so I'm just going to pop it over to the side. There we are. Uh, we're just going to do exactly what we did every single other instance. I'm going to press unfold. We're going to press set, orient, and layout. And that there is going to be absolutely perfect now. So if we just turn on our uh, checker texture. Just press space bar there. Oops, a daisy. Go back into that. There. So if we just have a look at that now, you can see how the texel rate is consistent. It's all unwrapped really, really well, and it's taken us not long whatsoever to essentially create something which is you know, visually interesting and you know would would work as a bookshelf without any concerns. Obviously, you can tinker this till the cows come home. Really, you know, you could even go as far as to say, well, you know, these pieces wouldn't wouldn't necessarily uh, intersect wildly at this point over here. So you could essentially say, well, actually, if you just extract this back out, well, I'm just going to extract this. So let's double click that particular bit, uh, extract faces. I'm going to turn off my checker texture because again, it'll just get in the way. So move it back to the side. Sorry, just got interrupted there. So what I've done is I've detached that off. So what you could do is you could make this more detailed by moving this. So these pieces of wood uh, front go back into the front view, or the right view, should I say. So these pieces of wood align a bit better to there. And then you could just, you know, well, we'll have to center the pivot point. I'm going to press Alt, uh, Alt C for me. It's going to press Control D there. And then you would just move these into place. And again, just grab these verts and move them across. Press Control D, move that there. I'll just eyeball it for the time being. I'm going to zoom in and try and get it perfect. And again, just move this to there. And I'll press Control D and I'll rotate this around for argument's sake. And then I'll move this one to here. So all I'm doing is I'm just making this uh, whole bookshelf more detailed with some additional compartments as the case may be. I'll press Ctrl D and move that to there and apply the same principle. So what we've done now is we've made some modifications to our bookshelf. Uh, and then because we've done the hard work and we've already used something which is unwrapped nicely, we would literally just combine it all together again. So combine. Delete the history, freeze transformations. I'm just going to scale this, drag this thing back out, and then do exactly what we did previously. So I'm just going to uh, show my UV toolkit. And as I said previously, you can often just get dragged over to the side, it doesn't mind anyway, so just pop it there. And then 
because we've made some modifications and we already have our correct UV shells, we're going to press unfold again, we're going to press set, we're going to press orient, we're going to press layout, perfect. You can even set up a shortcut script to do all of that in one fell swoop. Uh, it's slightly, you know, it's not not exactly advanced in all honesty, but I'd probably say uh, if you are going to be doing this multiple, multiple times, then uh, do a bit of reading up in terms of how to set up uh, customized scripts. It doesn't take long to do. And then suddenly you're literally just going to select your object and then you're going to press your script button. So you'll set up a shortcut key, whether it's Control Shift A, Control Shift F, or whatever it may be. So you'd press your shortcut key and then that shortcut key would consist of freezing transformations, deleting the history, uh, pressing unfold, setting the text array, orientating and layout. So essentially one button will do everything. Uh, so if I, if I was working on a game where I had to make 5,000 different types of uh, draws, uh, or tables and you know that's obviously something that I would do to make my life so much easier so now you can see obviously we've got something which is uh, you know adequately detailed and uh, perfectly unwrapped worst case scenario you mold it in this fashion you still don't have a clue in terms of how to unwrap and what you would do is go to create and automatic and accept it for what it is it's not going to be perfect but it'll suit your needs I suppose it'll do a reasonable job uh, so that's the end of the second tutorial and in the third one we'll have a look at how to go around and press control one how to go around and construct you know, these simple uh, simple objects so you know essentially game boxes and the rest of it we're going to do this in a very simplistic fashion we're not going to try and do too much in terms of creating the world's most perfect uh, playstation 2 case uh, you know we are designers after all okay